So within this process, what has been one of the greatest lessons you learned in um, having a more efficient way of going about it? One of the, one of the best ways and the most efficient ways to helping uh, more people is collaborations and partnerships. People that have the same mission and alignment and frequency as you that's moving in the same direction, same goal, and same promise. That's the best way to help people. A lot of times, some people have egos and want to try to do everything by themselves. And then you can only help so many people when you do that. But when you partner with other people that are in alignment, you can help more people. For an example, um, Don Lewis, the, act, uh, the actress, she's having an event where she's going to be helping like 500 students. It's going to be at LA Trade Tech. And it's in May. So I, I got her email and I saw, I saw all the things that she was doing. And she, uh, I reached out to her. I said, hey, I'd like to help you any way possible. And then she said, what time are you available to speak? I was like, Wednesday. So she called me up and she told me what it is that she needed. So I said, oh, I can help you in this area. I can help you in this area. I can help you in this area. Now, my name, the Barry J Foundation, is not on the billboard or getting any credit for this, even though she probably mentioned me as a collaboration, as a partner. But by me coming in, I'm helping her. It's helping my mission too because she utilizing my time and my resources to help her with her mission, which is the same as my mission. So therefore, when we have this big day where we impacting students in health, finance, and tech, it's going to be like 800 students. Now, the Baron J Foundation is going to be a part of that. So that's 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 impacted with the numbers who I have impacted as well as a partnership because she can't do it all by herself as well. Was there ever a turning point? I know you say you noticed it, but was there a turning point in your young life, you say growing up in Michigan, yes. where, you was, where you just seen that or, or you came, overcame a hardship and you was like, you know what, I don't want nobody to go through or feel the way I'm feeling, so let me aid people. What is the, you think is the root of why you want to help so many people? Um, the root of why I, Baron J, Littleton Jr., want to help so many people I think it's because when I was growing up in Detroit, Michigan, I saw a lot of things that I needed. I saw a lot of services that I needed, not only me, but people within my community. And we didn't have those services or we didn't have access to it. Or if it was out there, we didn't know about it. A lot of times there's a lot of services and programs out there, but guess what? You don't know about it because your circle is, 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 is small and you're not in the right circle to know about those different things. So I missed out on some things because I didn't know about it, because of the circle I'm traveling in, because of the neighborhood I am in. And so I said, you know what? Uh, this can't continue. So I need to be that vessel that can do it to let people know about different resources that they, they don't know about, different opportunities, and, and to be able to bring my resources and my relationships to the table to help make theirs better, make their life better. I love that because we see so many opportunities where the kids is not getting scholarships because they right. don't even know about it. Exactly. Like this, I got a scholarship to college through being a golf caddy. Now, how many people do you know that got a scholarship to college through being a golf caddy? None. None. Who told me about that? No one told me about that. My mother didn't tell me about it. My father didn't tell me about it. No one. I learned about it on my own because I was inquisitive. I was uh, uh, working at uh, at the park as a police cadet, making $67 a week, working 20 hours a week. And I saw these guys with some khaki pants on and some green shirts and a hat. And I was like, I went up to him, I said, what do you guys do? Now, most people won't go up to a stranger and say, what do you do? Or, uh, or talk to him. They just say, mind your own business. No, you got to ask, ask questions. So I asked them a question. They said, we are a caddy. I didn't know what a caddy was at being 15 years old. I'm like, what's a caddy? It's like uh, you carry the people's golf badge. It's like, you know, Tiger Woods, this is when Tiger Woods was hot, when he first came out, when he was like 18 and 19. It's like, Tiger Woods has a golf caddy and we carry bags, like, we carry golf bags. I was like, for real? And it's like, I said, how much you guys make? It's like, we make uh, $40 a, a loop. I'm like, what is a loop? They're like 18 holes. So I'm getting like 18 holes. I'm like, okay. And they said, we usually go out at least twice a day. So we're making about $80 a day, depending upon the level of caddy you are. And I'm like, wow, you guys making 80 a day? And I'm making $67 in one week? I'm not doing something right here. I said, I want to do what you guys are doing. So they said, go talk to Bill Cloven at Detroit Golf Club. I did. The following summer, I went through Caddy Academy. I, I got hired on as a beginner caddy and worked my way up to Master Caddy. And when I was in the uh, caddy shack, on the board, most people need to read what's around them. They said, you can earn a scholarship to college through being a golf caddy. All you have to do is 
uh, caddy for two years, graduate top 25% of your class, and have financial need. Mm. I was like, for real? I was like, I'm keeping this job. I, I can qualify for all those. And I applied for the scholarship and earned a scholarship to Michigan State University, full ride. Mm. All about being inquisitive right. about your life. And seeking, yes. Mm. So is that one of the things your foundation teaches the kids to constantly seek? Yes, that's one of the things that we, that's, that comes under the life skills and soft skills. Always seek, always ask questions. There's no such thing as a, a dumb question because there's somebody probably thinking that question but don't want to ask it. So um, always seeking, don't be afraid. If you, if, you, if you see somebody in a magazine or a movie or, or you read about someone, you want to reach out to them, reach out to them because most people are not going to do it. And then when they get your letter, your email, your phone call, they're going to be like, wow. Mm -hmm. And you're going to build a relationship that way. I built many relationships with people who no one ever introduced me to them, but I reached out to them because I had some type of soul connection. I related to them. It was something that was familiar. And I reached out to them via email or wrote a letter. And, and a lot of times they didn't respond right away, but they did respond and I'm able to, and I built a relationship. Thank you for watching A Wise Way. Subscribe to stay updated, share to pass the knowledge, or view our other videos on the left.